will add fiber optic cables between the switches and 10G media converter on both sides. Boom! 10G link! Well, not quite. Hey tech lovers, welcome back to Fast Cabling. Have you ever tried to watch multiple 4K cameras feed at once and the video starts coughing? Well, that's what's happening here. A factory here added more outdoor switches and industrial 4K cameras to watch assembly line, catch defects, and keep people safe. The control room is right next to the factory, but the network is one gig. The result? Drop the video, missing frames, editing multiple feeds is a struggle. So today, we'll fix it properly and I'll show you exactly how to upgrade path from 1 gig to 10 gig and to end. So our clients grown fast. Cameras and outdoor PoE switches multiply every quarter. They pipe all those video feed into a control room right next to the facility for live monitoring and post-event editing. So the data demand exploded, but the network still stuck at 1G. And that mismatch is the whole story. So buffers fill, queues back up, packets drop, and video stutters. So now we're in front of the demonstration board and here's our client's current chain. Let's check it out. We have a router connecting to a 24 port gigabit switch and to a network video recorder to display video. This is the control room linked by a copper cable to our facility which also is a 24 port gigabit switch connecting to cameras, outdoor switches and cameras. And we can multiple that by more cameras and more outdoor switches switches and all those streams collapse back into a gigabit link so that's the bottleneck traffic power ups at here the 1g uplink between the switches which cap per link throughput so let's run some friendly numbers a typical 4k cameras at 25 fps with h.265 may average 12 to 20 megabit per second let's call it 15 on the daytime and at night, with IR, bit rate often doubles because images get noisier. Let's say you have few outdoor switches plus cameras, leaving almost no headroom for a protocol overhead, control traffic, or any pulling multiple feet to edit. So you are already past a comfortable margin. Bursts push you over one gig, and the network starts dropping packets. So our client's first thought is, we'll add fiber optic cables between the switches and 10G media converter on both sides. Boom! 10G link. Well, not quite. If only the link between the switches is 10G, but the switch port fitting it is still 1G, that means you're still getting 1G. You've widened one row for block, but the on-ramps and off-ramps are single link, so there's no use. So in order to create a real 10G network, we need two things. 10G capable hardware and a topology that makes 10G do the real work. That means upgrading our 24 port gigabit switch to a managed switch with 10G SFP plus uplinks, building a fiber optic backbone and keeping copper for short device drops like our cameras and outdoor switches. Cat6 or Cat7 works for 10G copper in shorter runs, but for distance, EMI immunity and future proving, fiber is the backbone you don't skip on. Next, we'll do exactly what our client is doing on site. We're replacing both 24 port gigabit switch with 10G capable 24 port managed model switch fit cameras on one GPUE as needed. And with a total switching capacity of 128 gigabit per second, and their uplink to distribution are 10G SFP plus. Let's do it. Now this is our old gigabit switch. Let's take it down and we can replace it with our 24 port managed switch with 10G SFP plus uplink. Let's power it up. Now one thing to mention, this switch delivers PoE++ for the first 8 PoE port with a total power budget of 480 watts. 
Now let's plug in our cameras. And also the outdoor PUE switch. And remember, we are creating a fiber optic backbone, so we need SFP module. We have to sit in the SFP module, but make sure you use 10G SFP Plus module to create a true 10G uplink. So let's plug in our SFP transceiver to the SFP port so we can connect to our fiber optic cable. So today we are using this two string pre-made fiber optic cable. This is going to go straight back to the control room switch and no need to hand polish, no field termination. Just plug it into our SFP transceiver directly. This is string A. Let's plug it in. Now we don't need our copper cable anymore. And let's hang our fiber optic cable here on the wall. Now for the control room, we are doing exactly the same thing. Let's replace our gigabit switch to the 24 port 10G SFP plus uplink switch. Let me power it up. Here we go. Again, 10G SFP plus module. Plug it into the SFP port. We have two string, remember? We used string A. So let's plug it in. Now our control room is where the router and the network video recorder are. So now we are going to use a copper cable to connect them together. This one here to the switch. And from our switch, back to the network video recorder. Now we can burst many cameras roll into this 10G link instead of single 1G choke. And we're keeping our outdoor switch and the three cameras. So now we have formed a 10G link. Here we go. That's fast, so all our cameras are live now. I'm going to wave my hand to show you. They're a live video feed. So before the upgrade, we have 1G uplink max feed starter. Editing multiple views is painful, but now we've got 10G uplinks. Utilization briefs, editors scrub freely, export finish faster, and the control room finally feels like a control room. Now, if you're upgrading from 1G, your playbook is straightforward. Just replace the 1G switches with 10G capable managed model that includes SFP plus uplink and run pre-made fiber optic cable between your facility and the control room. Plug and play, much easier. They're managed switch so you can trunk your camera's VLANs over those 10G uplink. And also keep your cameras on PoE at the edge and wear possible, give your network video recorder and router and all this heavy use workstation 10G to the core. Now 1G is a great garden hose, but if you're running a fire system, build a 10G fiber backbone. Your cameras will grow with the factory and your network won't be the bottleneck. Now thank you very much for joining us. If this video helped, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also feel free to drop questions below, we'll answer them. And I'll see you in our next video.